So about three years ago, I did this exercise where I painted a whole bunch of abstract figures all at the same time, and I made a video about that, and recently that video has been getting a ton of uh, views, which is great, and with those views, I've been getting lots of questions. Um, people asking, did you sell these? You know, what happened with them? Have you done more? Did you ever scale them up and do bigger ones? And so in this video, I'm going to answer some of those questions as well as show the process for a larger painting that I did um, inspired by one of these uh, smaller paintings. So first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who's subscribed to my channel, especially those who've watched this original video on the figure painting. And I hope to be bringing you all more videos like this. Um, and it's kind of inspired me to dig back into this as a subject matter and play with this concept even more. So first question is, yes, I did end up selling some of these. I ended up framing quite a few of them and getting them uh, and putting them into uh, several galleries around town. Um, I don't know the exact numbers. I probably sold um, 10 to 15 of the better ones uh, of these. And I actually did an exercise recently where I painted live uh, figures just this last month, kind of inspired by, by you know all the views that I was getting on this original video. This painting here in particular uh, got a lot of really good feedback when I first uh, did these. And so I decided to scale this one up and do a painting inspired by it. You know, it's really interesting to to paint something small and then try to scale it up. And I'll talk, I'll try to talk through um, you know the nuance of that in this in this video. So as usual, I, I typically work with acrylic, and this is um, basically a twenty by twenty canvas that has been gessoed with with black paint and gesso mixed. And to start, I'm basically making kind of a slurry. A little slow dry uh, gel uh, mixed in with some acrylic paint and um, I'm honestly just goofing around and playing. I, I have a charcoal pencil and I'm kind of taking some different colors, cadmium red, um, yellow ochre, quinacridone, azo gold, uh, and just mushing all this paint together again with slow dry gel or acrylic retarder and keeping it sort of wet and using a palette knife to just make scratches and marks and you know, immediately what I recognized was when you're painting smaller, uh, there's just really not uh, room to do a lot of intricate details or or even textures. And so um, that was the main difference and something that I was just having a lot of fun with from the start was not trying to match the painting exactly, but just trying to get the big you know, feelings or the big areas um, and trying to capture the feeling of the of the smaller painting. And I've put that smaller painting up in the right here so, you know, you can see it as reference so you know what I was kind of going for and what I was looking at and thinking about as I was working on this background. But again, you know, there's a lot of difference between painting really small and painting a lot larger. So I wanted to add a lot of texture and just add a lot of details so that when someone was viewing this you know in person there'd be a lot of nuance again that they could notice uh, if they were you know standing a few feet from it the original small painting was very flat and uh, and had a lot of contrast um, but the main point was I wanted to try to capture the energy of the piece and you know if you look back at that original video there's a lot of different styles there's a lot of different elements there's a lot of different feelings i think that you can find in you know between comparing the different paintings that resulted from that project and this one was just really interesting to me and to others too like a, a lot of people have seen this painting and thought you know it's just otherworldly it just has sort of an energy about it it feels like these beings are almost being you know transported or you know dissolving in front of you or something like that so I think I ended up naming this piece Two Entities, um, which is a whole other subject, by the way. Just this concept of naming imagery and, and naming paintings. Um, I've, I've learned to sort of love that pro part of the process now, and uh, it's kind of a creative exercise in itself. I probably spent the majority of the time on this larger painting just working on the background. And again, not really trying to overthink it, just having fun. So I'm pretty much restricting my palette to probably 
three or four colors. Again, yellow ochre, uh, quinacridone, azo gold, some ivory black and cadmium red and, and titanium white, those kind of things. And just repeatedly um, layering and using a palette knife to scratch and using a, a paper towel to kind of smush things around. Actually, I think here I'm using some alizarin crimson. Um, I recognize that color. But keeping it pretty much with just warm tones. You know, finally I start to work on adding in the figures when I feel like the background is, you know, good enough. And, you know, I think it's almost impossible to capture the same energy when trying to copy a, a painting. But it was a fun exercise and, and definitely interesting to try. To be honest, at this point, I, I feel like, you know, it, it looks better even in the video than it, I think it did when I was painting it live. But with most paintings and most art that I do, I wasn't you know, too concerned. I feel like there's just a often a time where things feel a little uncomfortable. They just don't look like you want them to or expect them to. And so you just kind of have to keep pushing through it and trust the process. I mean, there's nothing super complicated about this painting. It's just going to be a bunch of abstract, you know, shapes and um, you just kind of have to keep working on it until you feel feel happy with it. And I will mention a few things here. One, I've, I've toned it a couple times um, using uh, quinacridone gold. It's a, it's a transparent paint. So um, covering up the titanium white um, with a thin layer of that kind of creates that rusty effect that you see here. And, you know, I'm going back with both a, a big palette knife and also some flat brushes and just laying down very intentional thick um, titanium white and other colors um, back on top and just repeating the process back and forth of laying down thick paint using the palette knife to scratch into the paint toning it um, and just moving my way around these entities you know these these figures uh, again trying to capture some of that you know original energy and emotion that seem to be um, so present in the in the smaller piece part of the cool part about this, this process is that um, you know since it's so abstract uh, it doesn't have to be perfect and um, there's no point where you you know you have to move forward and can't move back so I'm still working on the background again um, once the figures are in place you know I, I revisited this this sort of streak of light energy or color or landscape or horizon or whatever it is in the background behind these 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 two guys so you know i'm just going back into that and having fun honestly just kind of going into a trance i don't think i've talked about this a whole lot but a big part of the attraction for painting to me especially with abstract work is i tend to go into these zones where i kind of lose time you know i have to often set an alarm on my phone to to kind of make sure I don't just drift away and get caught up in, in this process for hours and hours without something to pull me back, right? Uh, and I think in this case, you know, that was definitely the case with the, with the background, especially on this piece, is I could just get lost in playing around with the details and just mushing paint around and adding texture and just, uh, you know, having music on and, and just zoning out. I really kind of feel like I should probably even do this type of painting more, like watching this video again. You know, it kind of reminds me of, of how fun it is. It's funny because I think also the colors that I'm using sometimes can contribute to that process, if that makes sense. Like if I'm really enjoying um, this combination of the way the paint feels and the way it's reacting to the tools as well as the colors, the, the combination of all that uh, can just really... I don't know. It's really cathartic and really strange. And I guess if you've you've painted a lot or done this type of painting, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I kind of even relate it to sports because there's times when you're playing basketball or golf or other sports where you just get in a zone and it just feels like, I don't know, you're just in this really special place. I think I'm putting on an isolation coat. I think that's what that was. Um, basically, it's a clear acrylic coat. Uh, yeah, that, that basically seals in all the paint, evens the tones, and then um, once that's dry, I'll come back and hit it with a varnish, a layer of varnish, either gloss or, or satin, depending on how I, how I want the painting to look. Although satin varnish, I think, is unavailable at this time. Uh, it's hard to find, at least. This painting is still available. I've had it in uh, two different galleries at this point. Uh, it was in uh, the Rec Gallery originally, maybe six months or so. Um, and then that gallery ended up closing, unfortunately. And now I'm showing work in a new space um, at an antique market. And I have a couple walls there. And that the painting is, is there currently. I've found that 
you know, once you build up a good body of work, sometimes it takes like a year or two to sell pieces and, and that's fine, right? It's, um, it's interesting to know. It just takes the right person, uh, to come through and to see the piece and have it really connect with them. And I'm, I'm really proud of this piece. I really like it a lot. I think, um, it will eventually find a home and, um, I hope someone will, will pick it up and love it. And, um, it's also inspiring me to go back and make more of these. So let me know in the comments what you think, what you want to know more about. Uh, and again, thanks for all your support. I really appreciate y'all. Thanks. Peace.